as well as just what's going on in the scene. So this one and a really, really big one, and we'll get into why, was an announcement done by NBC Sports. If you guys don't know who they are, they are a major, major telecommunication company in the United States for NBC. Um, but primarily they're talking about getting into Rocket League as an esport on a national television. That is pretty freaking crazy, okay? There is some pros to this. There are some cons to this. I will get into that. But first and foremost, the thing we need to talk about is just the facts, the details, the things we know. Um, and eventually when he is available, uh, if you guys do not know who he is, his name is Andrew. Uh, I always butcher his last name. Uh, Hayward. Andrew Hayward. If you guys do not know Andrew Hayward, he is one of my favorite writers in the Rocket League scene officially. Uh, but he writes for Macworld, Stuff TV, Red Bull Esports, uh, Greenbot, Mashable, Tech Radar. Basically covers all tech related articles. Um, but I know him from Red Bull. He does fantastic articles. He should be joining us later. Um, he is out with his kid and does not have the ability to. Um, have the car today i guess so he will join us when he can and i will get his thoughts but he's an amazing guy i got to meet him at the land um at the wiltern super super nice so we will we will get there but he might be joining us later really cool stuff so um he basically announced and got all the uh, press info for us for this so shout outs to him that's why his stuff is over here he's not here just yet so in the meantime let me add a clr browser and put you guys there. How does that sound? You guys get to be Andrew for now. That is not what I wanted. Hold on. Discord link will not work for that. Actually, it'd be kind of cool if you could like have Discord live in there. It'd be kind of sick, actually. Uh, boop. And let's move you guys. Hey, you guys should type. Test something. Let me know if that works. Hey, there it is. Sweet. All right, so you guys are in there now. Neato. All right, so the plan is to, one, go over all the details, two, talk of the pros and the cons, because there are some cons. It'll be interesting to see what your guys' thoughts are on that. After I get through everything, hopefully Andrew will be here. He'll be able to talk, and we can kind of go through some more thoughts. And then after that is done, we'll do a q and I'll go over all the Twitter questions, and then I will do questions from chat. So uh, stay tuned. So... First and foremost, the details of what we know. Um, NBC is planning on doing a multi-million dollar deal trying to get into esports in partnership with the Psyonix um, in order to basically broadcast Rocket League on a national television level. Think of it as E-League. So E-League is um, a broadcast done on TBS with CSGO. They did it with uh, Street Fighter. They're going to be doing it with Injustice 2. But this will be on NBC and have more of a focus towards the sports aspect of it rather than just, yo, TBS has a show on Fridays, okay? Really, really big deal because it gives in networks like with Al Michael and people who are really, really solidified in the scene um, for national television, well-respected, um, a very well-respected sports station uh, for like national football and stuff. So really, really cool in that aspect. Uh, the details of the actual tournament is it is a 2v2 uh, online tournament and it is done by Face It. If you guys do not know Face It, uh, they're a tourney operator uh, or an online like gaming platform. They're based out of London in the UK. Um, the way the broadcast itself will work is the last hour of each regional will show on NBC regional sports networks. So it'll be localized for you. Um, and then the last two days, uh, which or the last two day grand final will be on various international TV networks. So they're going to do regional and then they're going to do national. Uh, it starts July 22nd. Uh, the regionals will be August 5th and 6th and August 12th and 13th. Um, the grand finals will feature 16 teams, and that will be on August 26th and 27th. It is a $100,000 prize pool, which means that top place will probably take 50000 maybe. Maybe a little bit less. We'll see how they break that down if they have 16 teams. I assume only the top eight will get prizes, but I don't know how that will work out. Um, and then the other big thing, it is not under RLCS branding. It is not done by Twitch. It is not in partnership with Twitch. It is not in likes of people like myself or any of the other, any of the other RLCS casting crew, and we'll get into that later as well. 
Um, as of, for a total, there's going to be roughly 40 hours of footage, streaming, VODs, and TV. That is a lot of viewership for Rocket League in a national sense. Okay. The things we do not know is what talent is involved, who they are hiring for, like a host situation, what the broadcast itself is going to entail, what day it's on. We do not know any of that information, so it is very hard to speculate that in general. Okay. Um, a lot of people in chat have been saying it, and we'll get into that as well as probably one of the cons, I would assume, is it does conflict with Gfinity Challenger Series, and it also conflicts with RLCS, okay? So there is a lot of things we don't know. We do not know what the broadcast itself, like I said, is going to pertain. We don't know if there's going to be like a host and like an analyst desk and casting desk. Like we don't know any of that. We just don't know what it's going to be. We also don't know if it's going to be in confliction on certain times or certain things with the RLCS. There's all speculation right now. We just we just don't know. Okay. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they figure out those details or if they even thought of those details in the first place. Uh, there is a quote from Josh from Psyonix in there. So I assume they're well aware that it conflicts with the RLCS in some aspects. And I'm interested to see more details in the future about how they're going to make sure that they don't conflict in those senses. Um, if they honestly think that it being 2v2 is different enough uh, from the RLCS being 3v3, then I've got a problem with them um, personally. But I don't want to speculate because I do not know the details. Okay. So first and foremost, let's go on to the pros and the cons. Okay. Number one, the pros. This is an absolutely huge opportunity for Rocket League. The ability to watch and have Rocket League on a national stage on television is huge. Uh, yes, we have an audience on Twitch, but Twitch is a very specific audience that has been catered over the years uh, towards what we refer to as nerds, us, people like you and me, people that are watching. Um, there is a lot of people in the world like parents and family, relatives, everybody that just have no clue about the demographic that is Twitch. People do not understand online streaming. Um, I talked about it while I was at DreamHack this weekend where our hostess was like, yo dude, why, uh, why are you coming into, uh, why are you coming into Sweden? And I was like, well, I've, I do broadcasting for a video game, blah, blah, blah. It's on this website. And she looked perplexed. She had no idea that it was a thing like completely different life that she had no clue about. Um, and the nice thing about being on national TV is that this will help broaden that. And that brings in more people, more viewership for you guys, for the pros, hopefully for Twitch, and basically just make the entire the entire scene better, okay? Um, the situation, though, that I'm, I'm curious about with that is for a long time, everybody I've talked to when I did XM radio interview with um, Kevin Aki, whenever we talk to people that are in the that are in the uh, aspect of sorry, Andrew's responding. Um, for the people that are in the aspect of a um, like an ESPN or like a, a, a general media that aren't in esports specifically, all of them are very, very excited about Rocket League simply because of the accessibility that it, that it has. It is very easy to understand. You sit down, it's the most watched sport in the world. Like everybody understands soccer. Ball goes in net and now you're just adding cars to it. The intricacies and the, the small details, they don't, but they will learn that in time. And that's why NBC and what they're doing is very, very smart because it's not going to be a fighter or a shooter or anything that's graphic or things that you have to be worried about. It is just straight up like, yo, this is a sport. They just use cars instead of their feet. Ball goes in net. We get it. That's the big like opportunity that is being presented here and why we're really excited to bring it to national television. Um, the talent opportunities is also something that's really cool. Um, if it does conflict with the RLCS or anything like that, people like myself and the guys over on the RLCS do not have the ability to do it. It's, it conflicts, you know, it's, it's not like they're going to bring us over there and then bring a new talent for the RLCS. It just wouldn't make sense, you know? So that brings up opportunities for other people, whether it be in the community, other people in broadcasting talent in general, we don't know who they're going to sign or how they're going to sign. I assume face it has some ideas about what they want to do, but in reality, we just, 
we just don't know. I, I honestly have no clue on what they're going to do for that. So it'll be interesting to see who gets an opportunity to be on national television. Um, the only thing I beg for is we learned from MLG that please, for the for the sake of Rocket League and being the first time that it gets seen by that audience, don't fuck it up. Do not bring people that have no clue about Rocket League or have never played it or have never watched it or someone that was just like, hey, man, we got this broadcast coming up. Study it for two months. I need somebody who plays the game, who has been a part of the scene that knows what they're talking about, not some random Joe Schmo from NBC that thinks he knows what he's talking about just because he studied it for a couple months. Not going to work. Please bring in people that know what they're doing from the community. I beg you. Um, Number three, I guess, is where we're at for the pros. The cool thing is uh, we do have um, the ability to, for teams that don't make it into certain tournaments or your bubble teams, this is another great opportunity. It is open signups. It is going to be very RLCS-esque in that sense where anybody can sign up from the sounds of it and can compete and have a chance uh, to basically become in in the limelight, make a name for themselves, which is really cool. Um, That's also a con in my opinion. Uh, and I'll get into that. But the big difference and the weirdness to it is it is 2v2, so it's a lot more accessible. You don't need to have a dedicated player. It's just you and a buddy. Um, and that makes it really good. But at the same time, I don't know if they realize how many people are going to sign up for this. And that could overwhelm them because it overwhelmed us initially as well. So it'll be interesting to see who signs up. I don't I don't know. Um, it'll be cool. So... Um, the other thing that a lot of people like myself are excited for is it is showing how hard Sinex is truly focusing on the esports side of things. They do pay attention. They are listening. They do want Rocket League to become a big esport. We are trying to become a tier one esport. And for those that don't think we are yet, um, you need to pay attention because those viewers, that viewership from RLCS was not a joke. 207,000 we peaked at, 2.4 million concurrent or unique viewers. Like, there is a ton of uh, eyes on this, and I hope we don't ever repeat. But before I get into any further details, I'm going to bring in a certain person. Andrew Hayward, how are you, sir? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Good to talk to you again so very soon after LAN. Yeah, oh. do I sound okay? Yeah, you sound great. How was time with the kid, oh. man? Good, good. I uh, Hopefully I didn't I cut it short. Be- no, no, it's okay. Um, I, I have my kid at home with me two days a week, and then he's at school the other three. So, gotcha, uh, gotcha. Took, took him to a play place, and he's worn out, and I'm worn out. So now we're home. Nice, nice. Well, hopefully he doesn't get too mad. If worst case scenario, I'll, like if he doesn't have one already, I'll buy him a copy of like Rocket League or something, so he'll he'll be quiet and <laughs> let you talk well, to he's, me. He's four, and I uh, I popped him in front of uh, Netflix. So nice. So so he's out for a solid like hour. <laughs> he's fine. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So to kind of catch you up uh, where we are, I went over all the details of that uh, press post that you were nice enough to create Reddit uh, to give it Reddit. Um, yeah. Basically went over the prize pool, the size, what kind of format it was going to be, the days and all that kind of stuff. Um, kind of the things we don't know, um, like who the broadcast talent's going to be, what the right. actual like production will be, whether we'll have like an analyst desk or if it's just going to be like a recap or what the situation is for that. And then I kind of went over my pros, but um, I'm curious to hear what are your like positive things about the about the announcement? Like what things are you really excited about or things that you have to look forward to? I mean, it's on TV. I mean, you can't get I mean, you can get bigger than that, but you, like, this is a pretty fantastic start for, you know, getting a lot more eyes on Rocket League and Rocket League esports. Um, even if it's not, you know, the flagship product 3v3 RLCS, it's still, you know, Rocket League. And if, if they can get enough pro talent to enough teams to sign up that, you know, represent the top tier of competition, then it's going to be awesome to watch, even if it is 2v2. Um, and also there's a lot of investment here. You know, pros keep saying they want more money in esports. Well, here's another opportunity for to make money in Rocket League esports. So, you know, I think the visibility and the investment and, you know, the fact that maybe if the top teams don't sign up for this, there's more opportunity for kind of next level, you know, below that skilled players to, you know, get a platform. 
it's really interesting to to that aspect too because uh, like for me like the fact that it's on national television is unbelievable because it's not even national you know when they do grand finals it's gonna be international you know it'll be worldwide Mm -hmm. and that's a a a really big deal for rocket league because of the accessibility and how easy it is to get into it a lot of people in chat are saying as well like just seeing the amount of people talking about it that aren't related to esports just people in general that are part of media that are like oh crap like wait, what is this? Like, why are we not paying attention to this? And yeah, I think that alone is getting this buzz going and it's really carrying on the momentum that we saw from land, you know, like I was just talking to people in chat that the numbers at RLCS season three were not a, like, it wasn't, and I don't feel it's gonna be a one-time thing. Like, yes, rewards yeah. helped out a lot, but people still just spam rewards in anything like overtime today because it's a meme and that's what they wanna do. Like. <laughs> Yeah, the numbers were there. The retention numbers were there. Like people watched a lot, and they aren't staying just for their favorite teams. They're staying for all the games, and that's very rare compared to other esports. When you compare it to like Optic with Call of Duty, people yeah. watch and tune in for Optic, and then they peace out because they don't care about it. They just want to follow their team. So having people in that retention rate keep growing despite the fact that you know their favorite team may not be playing because they got knocked out in first round or what have you is is unbelievable to be completely honest yeah i mean you know the the teams that you follow may not even be in the best matches of the day the thing with rocket league is like you never know what's going to happen once they're out there so um you know the the two teams that you don't expect to be that you know to put up the most amazing matchup it could be game of this year you know game of the weekend so it's it's so eminently watchable that it's hard to resist just watching all of it, even if you don't care about those teams. No, 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 and that's you're exactly right on that aspect because it's it's crazy to really think about that. You know, like I want to watch the best match that we're ever going to see, right? And you don't yeah. know when that's going to be because yeah, you may <laughs> see a really and I casted the series with um, um, selfless and flipside. I was and just going to say that exact series. <laughs> the first four games were shit. Like, straight up. Yeah. Like, I'm being completely honest. The first four games of that series were absolute dookie booty. They were terrible. <laughs> but game five, though? Game five, though, was probably the most hype thing we've ever seen. Like, even the goal that went in wasn't even that exciting. But the moment that it happened at and what it meant and what it meant yeah. going to, into the overtime, like, that's what makes Rocket League so exciting. Because at any moment, you can have something like that. And that's why you need to watch every single minute, uh, minute of of rlcs or whatever you're doing because you want to be a part of that and yeah, i think that's and, and where it, yeah go ahead sorry the the accessibility of it is so key too because um i was watching that series i was there was like a little press pit area down on the stage and uh i was there because i knew i was going to be doing interviews uh and and the overtime happened and it was insane and then um xavier woods came down not to you know toot my own horn or anything but like <laughs> xavier woods ended up sitting down there with uh with Cyanix's PR lady, and uh, he was like, you know, I've I've played Rocket League, but I've never really watched the esports, and I just saw that goal that sent it into overtime, and I was screaming. Like he he got into it within like three minutes of watching Rocket League esports for the first time. So like anyone who has even like a fundamental understanding of soccer can just watch it and enjoy it. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy, and how it really does pan out in in the way that like then translates into what we're hoping for in the aspect of the national stage is like people are going to be able to just watch and be like oh yeah it's soccer why do they use cars Mm -hmm. and then hopefully whoever is commentating it can express the intricacies and and everything else of what's going on to where they then get the feel of okay this is why this is so crazy i get it you know but as time progresses we we just really don't know how it's going to pan out and that's why I'm kind of worried about like what talent they pull. And I'm not saying that the RLCS guys are the best of the best, but obviously we have the most experience out of anybody, especially when it comes yeah. to to a live broadcast. And that does make a difference. I mean, he, not to like you know point fingers or anything, but even DreamHack this weekend, you could really tell the difference between the people that have done it before and have been on a broadcast before on that kind of stage, and otherwise yeah. just the comfortability and the ability to handle anything that's given to us. And when it comes to national television. I'm worried simply because I don't care whether I'm a part of it or not. Like, of course, I want to be a part of being on a national television broadcast. It's a huge opportunity. 
but I want to make sure that Rocket League is represented for the first time on that stage in the best way possible. And I guess this transitions really well into the cons is I'm worried because of the time frame that it conflicts with. It's the exact yeah. same time as uh, DreamHack Atlanta. You have RLCS supposed to be starting up roughly in that time. We don't have official dates for that yet. Is that going to all get changed? We don't know. Uh, you also have the Gfinity series. It's like these pros are going to have to physically determine what do I want to do. And in all reality, if you're telling me 2v2, I could take a team, you know, say we take like Devo and Maestro, and then they've got Remco, and two of those guys split off. They go compete for that 100K rather than go and compete in the RLCS. And now you have a, a like a easier play because in reality you're only going to be playing against bubble teams. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I wonder if you know we're starting to get to kind of the verge of the point where there's going to be so much Rocket League stuff going on that you know people have to make those decisions. Teams have to decide where they're going to focus their energies, and if they try and stretch themselves too thin, they, they're going to get screwed. You know, they're going to pay the price. Um, nobody can. I would assume that nobody can try and do like four different major tournaments in the same time frame and hope to be, you know, good at all of them, especially when you're talking about 3v3s versus 2v2s. Right, right. Um, so, you know, I, I think there will be decisions that need to be made. And ultimately, that may leave, you know, kind of a thinner talent pool for this 2v2 event if major organizations aren't going to send their teams. Yeah, it was it was actually really interesting because someone tweeted at me and they're like, "Do you think orgs are going to pick up not only a threes team but also a twos team?" And it's it, it creates the problem of why Psionics has done things a certain way. And this is what is confusing me in my con section. Mm -hmm. Psionics has always made sure to do their best to not segregate the player base, and this is a prime example. Um, when they originally had a bunch of people asking for daily goals or things that I could do in game. So I boot up the game and it says score five goals and you get like a crate and mm -hmm. do this and that. The reason why they said they didn't want to do that is because they don't want to segregate the player base into doing something other than just playing the game and having the fun and doing their best. Um, yeah. Obviously people can go into unranked and do like freestyles and stuff, but I don't want to force my player base to go and do something just so they can get a reward. You see it all the time in uh, like uh, games like Hearthstone, where it's like you have to play this type of deck and all that kind of stuff. And when I did play those games, I hated it. You know, I did mm -hmm. it because I had to, but I don't like being forced to do this. And that's their entire mentality for this longest time of why they do things a certain way. So this completely goes against that. And that's what's really confusing to me is they're forcing these players to make decisions based upon play styles and team sizes and all this other kind of stuff. And I'm okay with it being in the sense of, all right, there's a tournament in you know Sweden, but there's another tournament in Berlin like a week later. You know yeah. what, maybe your org can't afford both, but you wanna go to one or the other. That's fine, I get it, go compete. But to have them all on the same day and that's why you can't compete in them, that to me is just, that doesn't make any sense. To me, it, it literally does not make sense. <laughs> I wonder if there might be some awkwardness within teams when you go from 3v3 to 2v2. You have a roster of three starter level players, and now you have to pick two of those to go vie for, you know, part of a $100,000 pool. Which two get picked and which one gets left on the side? You know, so someone, someone could end up being really disappointed if they don't get a share of that. Right, and that might also, I mean, rosters in general, we're, we're trying so hard to make sure rosters stick together yeah and you may see other people um i mean a prime example was Licinio. Licinio is a huge ones player and was mm -hmm. a huge proponent and wanting ones to be a part of the pro scene he wanted to have ones to compete in and in certain situations i wouldn't mind that you know 3v3s and 1v1s are totally different um not only because they're really exciting for me like i love ones you can see every little finite detail but you're not taking a team apart you know you just have one guy where you know maybe day one of land you go compete in the ones and then by the later but at the same time then my teammates like yo why aren't we scrimming and like it creates all these problems and i don't know how people are going to balance that or even handle it in the sense of like not only do you have to decide which of your teammates are the ones that are going to compete and then you're the sub but you also mm -hmm. have to decide okay I have a better chance at this 2v2, so I'm not gonna compete in the RLCS, or I'm not gonna go to DreamHack Atlanta with a 50K prize pool. I'm not gonna like, 
Yeah. It's just it's just weird the timing and opt and, out of the RLCS for yeah, this. But right. you know, I could see DreamHack or other kind of you know shorter term events like that being passed up. Right. Right. And it's it's interesting too because I mean the pro of it is in in reality you have three you now have three chances to qualify for one of the ninety six teams to get into the RLCS. Mm -hmm. And then obviously you play through that bracket to get into the league play that has auto quality spots now. Um, there was three for EU, but the market team disbanded. So now there's two on each side. So there's six available yeah. teams. And like, I look at that and I'm like, okay, if I don't make this cool, now I can go play in these other tournaments. So I'll be fine. You know? So it's, it's good for that aspect. It's just the timing is weird. Like if they put it at a different date, um, I'd be okay with it, you know? And for all I know, but based upon the days that they've announced, it won't be like, if they did it like e-league where they're like yep it'll be friday at like 6 p.m or 8 p.m or yeah, whatever yeah. then it doesn't conflict with your rlcs the issue is is then players are gonna have to find a way to to balance burn rates you know like i'm playing too much i'm burning myself out and that's just a personal thing that they can work on yeah but to have it literally the exact same day is it's just it confuses me it, it segregates I, I the player base Sorry, I wonder if, if maybe it's just this first time around, like, you know, they're working with a different partner, they, they're working on a TV schedule this time around, maybe they couldn't finesse, you know, the pocket, you know, the window of time that it falls in this time around, Right. and as they have more lead time for if they do a second season of 2v2s, and, you know, the, the fifth season of the RLCS, maybe they can kind of spread things out a little better but they may have had to just kind of take what they could get from their partners on this one. Yeah, it's it's interesting too, because obviously we don't know the negotiations that went on with NBC. Like mm -hmm. there, that made it would have been the stipulations like, hey, we've got the RLCS 3v3, you guys can't do that. And they're like, all right, we'll, we'll do a 2v2. Or That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking yeah. that they probably couldn't do another big 3v3 tournament at the same time because uh, Twitch runs the RLCS, obviously. So... Um, you know, that's a totally different partner with different platforms. I've got to believe that they can't just kind of duplicate that. Like they had to have a yeah. different hook to it. And that hook is 2v2s. Yeah, even on the, I mean, even on the major business side, that might also be one of the things for NBC. I mean, if you talk about um, male soccer in when it comes to like high school and, and major sports, it's always a fall mm -hmm. sport. And that's, I mean, that's right when it happens. Soccer practice, usually four teams in high school starts roughly mid to late August. And then they go into November, December, if you go to state. So this would be right around that time. So when everybody's getting there ready to play soccer in the summer and their travel teams, and this is gonna be the exact same time. So it's like, when I was a kid, I went and traveled, did, did soccer tournaments all day. And then when I came home, I wanted to watch more soccer. It's the same thing. It's <laughs> yeah. like, I go and cast rocket league all day. And then I come home and all I want to do is play rocket league. Unfortunately for me, I left my damn controller and wave punks can in wave punks backpack. So it's in California oh, instead. No. <laughs> so I gotta go buy a new controller, but it's like people are very hooked on it. So yeah. I understand like that may be the reason NBC is like, yo, this is our major time slot for viewership. Like they, obviously they pay attention to that stuff. Like, they check their numbers. They check their viewership on when it's mm -hmm. when it's peak. So that may be part of the reason too. Like, it's not like NBC doesn't have some buying power if they're putting in a couple million dollars. You know? <laughs> like, right, right. And I'm sure they have a lot of sway as far as you know. They kind of get to choose when they want to do this. Right. So, I mean, it's interesting. Is there any other things that you can think of about um, possible conflictions or things that you um, would I like just, to dislike? I kind of want to start hearing from players, you know, whether or not they're actually going to try for it. I mean, at this point, there aren't a lot of details. Hold on, my kid's yelling for me. <laughs> Yell back. <laughs> hey, what's up? Give me a few minutes. Oh, sorry. Um, no, no, you're fine, I, man. There aren't a lot of details on, you know, exactly when signups are occurring. I mean, they, they gave us the time frames for the They said it starts July 22nd. Is that when signups start or is that when the competition starts? I assume that's when the competition starts okay. yeah, because they I have thought. to, I mean, they have to feed into regionals and like mm. the, the thing I don't think they realize is how many people sign up for these tournaments. Like, <laughs> I don't think right. they realize that we had 6,000 teams sign up for last season of RLCS. Yeah. When you say open sign up, people are like, what? People are like, wait, <laughs> I can sign up. And now you're telling me that not only is it 6,000 teams that sign up, but that's 3v3. This is yeah, only 2v2, yeah. like you and your buddy anybody like that's a lot of people and if they have to work through that like i don't know if they're ready for it yeah 
Um, I'm, I'm curious if, if a lot of the top pros are going to be there because people like Garrett G and J Naps were tweeting me today and they were just kind of perplexed by the whole thing. Like not only the timing, but the added investment in 2v2s instead of 3v3. So, you know, does that mean that they are kind of so frustrated with it that they're not going to do it? Or does it just mean like, oh, well, I don't really like it, but I'm going to do it anyway? you know yeah I, I mean it could be one of those things that they just don't like the, the issue is is like obviously a lot of these younger guys and i've had my fair share of discussions with um garrett as well yeah if it strikes a nerve they are very vocal about it and that's good right. to an extent obviously like they need to be careful with it but it's because they care and I, I don't blame them. It's the same thing as me. Like if someone says something and it affects me, I'm like, yeah, dude, like I want to voice my opinion. I've learned very early on not to do that, but that's because of <laughs> also the feel. position I'm in. So this yeah. is why you and I are talking healthily and not giving like, yo, F this, F that, you know, like all mad and stuff. It's because we're having an open discussion and because of the positions we're in. So, um, you know, it's it's because they care. You know, they want to be a part of it. They understand the opportunity that it is for them. You know, they wouldn't yeah. express that opinion unless they didn't think that. So um, I understand where he's coming from, you know, like for Garrett. And then they're like, oh, shit, like this is national television. Right. I want to be a part of that. But at the same time, like they understand the opportunity that RLCS presents, too. So, you know, this is a one off thing for NBC. We don't know how it's going to go. There's no future tense. But if they, you know, go in and crush and take regionals again, well, guess who we were going to see in season five, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm actually going to ask around a bit and see if people are willing to kind of say whether they're planning to do it or if they're right. kind of iffy about the timing. Um, tomorrow I have an interview with uh, Josh Watson from. Okay. Psyonics. So uh, spoilers. When is that article coming out? Tell me. <laughs> I want to know. Uh, I may I may be doing an article on the NBC thing Friday, which would be partially from that interview and partially talking to players. And Does then... everybody in chat hear that? That's exclusive stuff that you don't get anywhere else. That's why you follow this channel. And uh, Andrew, and his Twitter is right below his face. Follow him on Twitter. <laughs> Read all of his articles. Um, the, the other article planned is like a larger competitive roadmap article like that's the main one that i'm doing the interview for so we're going to talk about season four of the rlcs we're going to talk about college leagues i want to talk about china if if they're willing to say anything. yeah, yeah. So, that's with like so, tespa i think right or whoever it that? is there's because they've got like because the the countries over in the east have like tespa being i think tespa is the one that's doing the uh the version of the game that's gonna be like free to play and all that kind of stuff or no who's uh, tespa what is tespa doing what am I thinking of? Tencent. It's Tencent. Tense. Okay, yeah. So Tencent is the Eastern. They do bit. everything over there. Yeah. But <laughs> Tespa does. What does Tespa do? Oh, Tespa does the collegiate one, and that one's going to be like drop oh, shot and okay. everything. That's what yeah, I'm thinking yeah. of. So the collegiate one is with like drop shot and all that kind of nonsense and rumble, mm -hmm. and then Tencent is going to be doing. God. There's Thank a lot you. of things going on. <laughs> yeah. If you guys are if you guys are new to Rocket League, I'm sorry. Like, there's so much crap to like take in right now. <laughs> It's unbelievable it's awesome for us but like trying to keep it all under wraps for everybody and people with questions i'm like all right yeah, yeah. hold on let me get this together <laughs> for you like, it's crazy um i also have another feature that should be posting like any minute now about uh oceana and their performance with the rlcs nice so i talked to both teams and i talked to yummy cheeseman and shogun and kind of brought it all together about so that's the one that you did so. at um at the land, right? And those when you guys yeah, interview yeah, them. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So it took a little time putting that together, but it should be posted today. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. So yeah, it's. I mean, I'm interested. I'm. I'm really curious to see uh, what happens. Like, it's one I'm of those things sure we don't. We don't know until details come out. Yeah. I think it'll all shake out okay. I mean, some some players and teams might not be involved, but I think we'll still get something that's entertaining, that is very high profile, and that ultimately benefits the community. So, hard to argue with that. Yeah, I think I think we can both agree. Like, it's fantastic for Rocket League, no matter what happens. You know, getting yeah. getting the viewership and eyes on it on the national level is absolutely fantastic. Uh, if us RLCS guys can't do it due to complications with RLCS, like 
power to whoever gets it, you know? Just do your best to uh, well, represent. What is your, your possibility of that? Like, are you bound by contract that you can't do something for other, you know, broadcasters? As long as it doesn't conflict with time, um, time slots for RLCS, okay. I, I can do it. Um, the only thing that I'm curious about is if it is being run by Face It. Face It obviously has their own, you know, their own staff and per personal preferences for talent and all that kind of stuff. So I have no idea who they're going to reach out to in, you know, in in the community. I have absolutely no yeah. idea. I would love for it to me. I would love to do something like that. It'd be super cool. But um, as long as it doesn't conflict with the RLCS, because RLCS is always number one in my heart. So right. um, and contract. Well, good luck, but, man. <laughs> but yeah no i think i think we both easily agree like it's gonna be it's gonna be great for rocket league no matter what happens hopefully it all mm -hmm. plans out and stuff is really cool um props to whoever gets the opportunity to do it and have and have really really good time with it um yeah. i also tweeted out you know anybody who does have questions about that stuff do not be afraid to reach out to me you know if, if someone from the community is like what the heck is going on I will gladly do my best to give expertise towards just because I want it represented in the best way. So Yeah. I mean I've got um, a belief they're gonna use experienced people, whether they are Rocket League experienced or just esports experienced. See, and that's what scares me because just esports experience did not go well last time. Yeah. Because when we did MLG, no offense, Benson and Puckett are amazing, but they didn't know poo about Rocket League and it was terrible. Yeah, they didn't have the nuance of it. No, no. And I, I really hope they don't just say, hey, we want uh, really talented esports guys. Here's two months to study the game because that's not going to cut it. Mm -hmm. it, it. It will not do it. Like I have a I just met with a guy who's doing the observer stuff for um, for uh, Gfinity. Okay. And like he's really getting into it. Like and that's why I respect it because he reached out to me. He's like, yo, what do, you, what do you want as a viewer? Like, what do you want as a caster? Like, what kind of ops do you want? How do you do it? What's the view? And we broke it down. Like we talked for two hours just about like how to observe the game. And I'm wow. like, by the way, this is all just my personal preference. Everybody's different. And he's like, wait, what? And I'm like, exactly, man. Like, <laughs> so he's like, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm diamond right now. I'm gonna really start grinding again and get a feel for it. And I'm like, that's what I respect. You know, somebody who's willing yeah. to put that kind of time into it. And unless we have um you know casters are going to do that same thing it's i'm i'm worried for that aspect but it's only because i care so yeah well i'm pulling for you guys because i think you're all awesome at this so oh, you're biased <laughs> we got to meet you and try to like win you over that's why <laughs> yeah yeah you're ruining me well, we're trying to just let it happen well, thanks <laughs> as long as you keep writing these articles i don't care like yeah, <laughs> i'll yeah. do my best to do whatever i can <laughs> But yeah, really, really cool well, I'd stuff. I probably got to bail out. <laughs> yeah, if you got a young one watching Netflix, that only lasts so long. So he's he's already like slamming trucks against my door. So he's trying to play Rocket League. Just needs a he needs is a ball. he seriously is. <laughs> awesome stuff. But greatly appreciate you stopping by. Uh, say hello to the little one. He has no idea who I am. But no, no. But someday, someday. Right. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, appreciate you stopping on, man. Have a good night. All right, you too. All right, thanks. See ya. Alrighty guys, so if you do not know, that was Andrew Haywood. He is a writer predominantly for Red Bull Esports, has done a bunch of articles. If you guys did not hear um, his info, if you guys see it over on the left, it's at A H A W A H A W or H A Y W A. Make sure you go follow him on Twitter if you do not. He has a bunch of articles. He's interviewing Josh from Cyanix about the whole situation tomorrow. But plenty of articles coming out from him regarding the scene and insight with really important figures. Um, he did also say exclusively here that there is going to be a bunch of articles coming out regarding certain things as well, whether it be the collegiate system, um, hopefully the uh, market in the East regarding uh, like the Japan teams and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of cool articles coming out from Andrew. Make sure you go love him all over the internet um, and ask him questions. He's very, very forward um, in his responses and will generally give you an answer pretty quick. So. His Twitter's in chat. Make sure you go follow him. Give him some love. Um, but that does it for all the pros and cons and stuff. All this VOD and everything will be exported in a Twitch highlight as well as on Gibbs' YouTube.